hello friends welcome back to the courses plc tutorial series so in this this particular video i'm going to talk about library management so courses provide an option to create your own library and utilize that in a different projects which will be form of compiled formation so there are multiple ways to create the library manually automatically using python script so let's go into the details how we can create the library and utilize that into the different projects so in order to create the library we need to first go to the create project and select the library option category in the library option we have multiple form of library like empty courses external container interface so based on our need we will create the library so here i am going to create an empty library so it will have no structure we will start everything from the scratch and how we provide all the information let's see it together so i'm just giving the name of the library and the location where it should be saved once we click on yes it will give me an empty structure so there's no device no pau's uh, no project information nothing will be there and we need to define all one by one so first we will define the project information what is project information so it basically create or contains all the information for this particular library which can be utilized during the instantiation so like which company has created what is the title of this particular library and what is the version so these three are the main item which we need to fill and these are the mandatory items so as you see these are marked as a bold so these are the mandatory item which we need to fill after that we have the library categories default namespace placeholder author and description so this we can put also and if we don't put that also fine so what is default namespace so namespace is basically utilized to instantiate the library when we are putting that into the code okay placeholder is something the name which will be given as a name of the library what is the name of the library which is coming there into the library manager author who has written it and description description of the particular library what exactly it is doing and all those things we can put into the description part so either we can give namespace placeholder same or even we can give a different name so right now i'm giving different name so that it will be easy to understand when i'm instantiating into the library manager so let me give the author uh, description a little bit and once we are done we need to click on ok and all the informations are basically filled here library categories i will talk uh, later so we will see how exactly library category makes a difference so let me put some folder so like function block folder another folder i can create is something for interface so just to give a glimpse how exactly the folder structure we create how uh, function block we create and how exactly this things is getting instantiated so once we have defined all our objects all other pous all the different folders then what we need to do is we have two option one is save project and install the library into the library manager and another is save project as a compiled library okay so we can do any of those uh, option we can choose any of those option to create the library and either as compiled or directly if we want to just do it for the checking purpose we can directly put it into the library repository so once we have taken the option of library repository by default it will get into library repository and it will be showing here so if you see in the miscellaneous the test lib has came because our title was test lib so that is where it will show as a test lib but it is coming under miscellaneous why because we don't have the library category if you see library category is empty and our title is test lib so it is coming in the miscellaneous test lib okay so in this way uh, the library is getting created and when we want to go and add library it will also come under miscellaneous and we can add the library so now if you see in the library when we add 
we will have a namespace which is demo lib we have lib demo equal to test lib which is the test lib is the title lib demo is the uh, default place placeholder correct so all the name which we have given here accordingly it is showing when we are into the library manager so demo lib is for the namespace lib demo is for the library name the placeholder through which it is shown in the library manager so in this way whatever the names we define accordingly it will be shown into the library manager let me add a function block so pau uh, which we will make it as a function block so that just to understand how exactly we can instance it how exactly it will work okay so let me define this function block so once the function block is defined let's go back into the library manager and just update it into the library repository so once the library repository is updated we will see uh, all the definition which we have done and now if you see yeah it has updated here so it is now showing into the demo lib or the test lib library the function block and okay let me click there the function block and inside the function block if we see the folder structure we have the function block of test fb so this way uh, the structure will get created it will show the input output it will show the uh, graphics documentation i will show the basic documentation how we can create so right now if you see we don't have any documentation no details so now if the function block is there i want to instantiate that function block into my project so how exactly we can do so we need to define the instance name first so let me define the instance name as a test lib and then we need to use the namespace of the library so namespace which we have defined as a demo lib that i'm using it here so namespace dot when i say it will show me all the function block which are there so i will check uh, the function block and then once the instance is created then it is the normal process how exactly we do or define any function block or put into the logic okay so the same way we can utilize those options and instantiate that particular function block using the instance or by creating the object so that is how the basic part which we can create the library and we can instantiate it into the project now uh, let me go to another option which is for the library category so right now if you are seeing that the library which we have instantiated it is coming under miscellaneous what if i want to have my own structure where i have my own defined name under which this library should come so for that we need to define a library category uh, file okay where we need to have uh, this particular structure so this particular structure has if you see we have the GUID so GUID we can generate it from any online GUID generator so if you go on the Google and type for the GUID generator the first one is the free online GUID generator which we get we can utilize it it is just to give you a unique uh, number okay so number or uh, the ID so after that we need to put the version and we need to give a default name we will save it and then we will go to the library category uh, and click on the add from the description file so from the description file when we click and we can import the description file which will be having extension of xml or libcat okay once we click ok and save the library so right now i'm going to utilize the compiled library because it can be uh, so this is another approach uh, which we can utilize to import or install the library into any project okay so let me save this particular library into the compiled form and now we can go to the project and in the library repository we need to click on the install and we can install that particular library so now if you see it has come under its own structure so the parent folder name inside that the 
uh, library folder name and the version details okay so how exactly we have defined the structure now we have a one structure defined correct now under this particular structure i want to add another library so i created another into the library i have defined uh, another all different one and i want to add another library into this particular structure how we can do that so basically in order to do that we need to again create or expand the structure where we need to provide again the name uh, which will be the name of the library so for example let me give a name called test lib so that's how exactly it is it will be it should be the parent folder should be the first the parent folder name should be there and then the new library name should be there with the backslash so again we need to get the guid because this library should also have the guid so guid we need to put into the id form and we need to provide the default name versions now as it is going into the parent folder or parent category so we need to give the parent category okay and we need to close into the parent category part so codices is providing an example also which you can find into the folder where the codices has been installed so it is basically going into the codices templates and the library templates okay so i will put the path where exactly it will go and in that one you can see uh, all the examples how exactly codices has defined all the library structure how the parent and the child structure can be created so all the things are already defined so we can utilize those structures and we can define that into our new file so this this is the manual process i will also show you how exactly we can use automation the python script to automate all these things and uh, get everything done automatically so uh, now uh, we need to put into the parent category the parent id and then we need to also put the the name so this particular name is basically showing how exactly the format is getting done okay so once we have the default name we have to give the default name of the new library which we are adding into the parent one okay so once we have done all these things we need to save this particular file and then we need to go back to the library project and into the project information we need to again uh, add it so let me remove this and add it from the description file so once so if you see here it is showing both the parent and child so let's first instance both parent and child both at, at the same time how exactly it will show into the structure let's see it so save as a compiled library and give a different i'm giving a different name so i should and save it then go to the project courses project basically and sometime we need to close the courses id and open it so that the structure should be proper so right now if you see uh, we have having two options correct test lib is also there and the parent name is also there because we had selected both so let me uninstall uh, this and install another one so now here if you see because we have selected only right now the uh, test lib so this particular new structure is coming so the parent i have removed and we have only the child now if i go into the add library and here also it will coming in the same structure and i can add it here so now if you see here uh, it is coming in the same structure there's uh, no difference but if you see we have some documentation also available okay so on the function block folder i have written something which is coming here as a documentation now if i expand the function block folder let me expand it and click on the function block you can see that we are having some documentation which is coming so these are the very basic documentation which is coming how exactly these are coming uh, let me show you so whatever we define or 
put into the comment part for this box like the description of the uh, function block what exactly it is then the input for all the variables which we have defined we have defined the description so those things are actually coming here as a documentation so the documentation get created automatically when we define that as a comment or as a description so there are multiple ways to define a documentation so this is the basic part we have restructured text part we have sta sml chm options so lot of options are there to define the whole documentation so that is another uh, aspect of the library management but uh, this is just the basic so it will have the graphical it will have the documentation it will have the input output variable so by writing just descriptions we can be also able to generate the basic documentation so if you click on the function block we have the documentation here so whatever we define here in the documentation that will be coming as a documentation for the folder okay so in this way the whole documentation we can define or we can utilize advanced feature of the chm and the restructuring text uh, which is provided by the code itself the library documentation options which can be utilized for the creating a full fledged library with all the html and uh, links between different folders okay so now this is uh, all on the manual side correct so the whole manually we have done we have defined now what if we have already a uh, defined uh, library and we want to add our own library into that so so for that we need to know the guid correct so uh, how exactly we will know the guid so here uh, i have defined a script so we need to define a python script basically which will actually fetch all the guid of the whole library whatever is uh, put into the courses okay so if you see here all the guid are there okay so i think i have enabled the scripting one also so let me first disable that so it will be more clearer so this enable the script logging i have to disable and now execute the script file the python script file i will choose and then uh, if you see all the guid is getting displayed here so let me do it again so get details and so in the message part yeah so all the guid is listed now under which guid i want to put my uh, new library we need to again define instead of defining either you can define manually the uh, libcat structure or we can have the python script itself which will do it for you so we don't have to do it from adding description file okay so i'll just remove it so now it is blank and uh, i will go back again to the scripting and execute script file so i have defined for adding a lib okay so when i execute that particular script once it get executed and i go to the project information i can see that library category is added automatically so i don't have to do uh, much so i'm showing it here uh, uh, manually by running a script but we can automate everything uh, using command line uh, to get all all this activity done okay so this is like uh, main category now if i have also defined for sub category like under um, parent folder we have defined uh, the child folder child library so like that another options is there which right now i'm running the script so once this script is getting run and when i go back to the project information let the script get completed so okay yeah so we can see that it has been updated with the particular folder structure so in this way we can create the library we can automate all this library category options so yeah in this way we can create library manually and automatically lot of things so that's all thanks for watching that's all for this video uh, see you in the next one